All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, wait, fuck. Can I sing my Mystery Science Theater yeah. song? In a not too distant future, 2017 AD, there was a bunch of dirt bag guys, not too different from you or me. They worked at the Podcast Institute, tweeting shit all day in a rank track suit. They did a good job doing irony, but their bosses didn't like them, so they made them do misogyny. We'll send them <laughs> shitty writing. The worst we can find. La la, la la la. They'll have to keep on reading them and they'll slowly lose their minds. La la la. la. Now keep in mind they can't control where the zone begins or ends. La la la. Because we all just live there now, which is hard to comprehend. Drop a roll call. Will! Amber! Hi, girl! Felix! Felix. <laughs> Matt. Matt. Oh, guy. Virgil. <laughs> if you're wondering how Chapo makes money, despite its lack of class, then repeat to yourself, it's just a show. I should really just relax for Chapo Trap House Theater 3000. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> Will wrote that song himself. That was amazing. He's a big boy. It's a it's movie night, guys. It's a movie episode. We're happy to bring you this one, and we're raring to go because we just watched this movie, and all four of us are so fucking angry I and am nauseated, livid. <laughs> okay, and it's even made better by the fact that I don't believe for most of us we've seen this before. Yeah, yeah. It's I haven't seen this it again. It's I haven't like, seen this in a long shit. time, and I God, it's so much worse than I remembered. And I remember hating it when I first saw it in the theater. But it's an incredibly important movie. It is an important movie, and it's one that's been like sort of on the periphery and I think it's going to be a, a good one for uh, our movie roasting we're talking about Zack Snyder's 300 hell yeah holy <laughs> Spartans tonight we die in hell be afraid Sparta will burn to the ground this is blasphemy this is madness madness this is Sparta! The thousand nations of the Persian Empire descend upon you. Our arrows will blot out the sun. Then we will fight in the shade. This is where we fight! This is where they die! Before this battle is over, the world will know that few stood against many. It is essentially the Ur text of the alt right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This movie is the Rosetta Stone of like neo fascism in America. It came out in 2007, I think. Right. Um, coincidentally, just around the about the same time that uh, people started to get sick of the Iraq War. And uh, the movie is basically a an ode, a, a Homeric ode to neoconservatism and then proto alt right fascism. Like that, at the time, I remember when the movie came out, like the everyone was like, "Oh, this is just like neocon shit." But looking at it now, it's way more alt right. It's oh, way, way more just more. like like four chan fascism than anything else. So yeah, let's start with the beginning of the movie, right when the disgust began for us. Uh, when we start out, we see uh, a bo a baby being thrown off a hill because you know the Spartan. Well, no, the first shot of the movie, yeah, the, the are baby of skulls. Babies. Yes, yeah. Planned it's like Parenthood. a Planned Parenthood dumpster, basically. Because and these are the good guys. Yeah, who they cast to, their less than perfect offspring off of a fucking cliff to die. And I'm getting a little ahead of myself here as we delve into the main plot. But they say it was because they had to be perfect warriors, but. I think they just really wanted all the boys to be tens. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this is a this is a it's a historical film. This is sort of like the the Conqueror or the Duelist, where we learn about history through film. And what we learn from this film is that uh, ancient Sparta and really all of ancient Greece was basically Pizzagate the society. <laughs> 
<laughs> and the entire yeah. Persian War happened because uh, King Xerxes sent his emissaries to like I don't know do diplomacy or trade with ancient Greece, and they came back and they were like. Can you fucking believe what's happening just like around the corner from us? Yeah. Guys, we can't. Th- this is bad. We got to do something yeah, about this. Yeah. They come in. They're like, hey, we think we could, um, you know, like you guys have, you know, that grain. And we could. Whoa, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> and the Spartans went. Spartans, tonight we dine at Comet Ping Pong. <laughs> <laughs> like, it is incredible to me that, that this movie, like that. The Spartans uh, are, are the, I guess, the heroes of this movie, despite being un- just like awful and unappealing in every fucking way. Yeah, their society is deeply evil. And like, I really wish the Persians would have won that war. Yeah, I think we'd be way better off if they had. We wouldn't even have to do this show if the Persians had won in at Marathon a year after the events of this movie. We would have full luxury communism. Everything, like. Okay, so when the emissary, the hip hop style emissary, goes to uh, goes to Sparta, uh, and he's like gesturing to all the shit Leonidas has, and Le- it's implied that Leonidas is going to protect the way of life. The stuff we see, the stuff that Leonidas is kind of he's we're seeing from his perspective are his slaves. <laughs> Uh, the children that they fuck. <laughs> uh, by, the, by the way, this uh, this is the 300 episode, and for 300, we're gonna see if we can make 300 jokes about pedophilia in one hour. The, the, so yeah, towards the beginning, like he's there with like the cuck, the cuck conservative, the Athenian McNulty yeah. is in the movie, and he's like, yeah, we won't lie down like those. Uh, Athens already turned you down. If those boy lovers can do it, and it's like. You Sparta also fucked tons it was of children. Way more institutional in yeah. Sparta. Pederast. They're like, we just work for us. It's not pedophilia. The whole, you do it as punishment. The whole thing. The whole society was a British boarding school. Yes, <laughs> considerably worse. And like, look, this is this is the second Zack Snyder movie we've roasted on the pod. Uh, fan, longtime fans of the show will, of course, remember uh, the Batman vs Superman episode. And God, it's it's hard to say which one of these movies is more homoerotic, but it's probably 300 just because there's more just chess. There's more, and there's like, more shirtless dudes. Uh, it's very odd. All of these swarthy Mediterranean men with not a, not a jot of chest hair between any of them. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. And here's the thing. like The thing to keep in mind about this movie, like again, the thing I was so struck by watching it for a second time is just how unbelievably bad everything looks and how fucking boring it is. Like, I think Brendan said the entire movie is just like one long cutscene from a video game, but it looks better on PlayStation 2 than it does in this fucking movie. Most PS2 games had better plots and acting. And I'm not talking about like big dramatic games, like not the Metal Gear games or, uh, you, you know, like uh, Shadow, you know, Titan, whatever. I'm talking about like, Twisted Metal. <laughs> Twisted Metal is like the game where you you do demolition derby with a fucked up clown is a better work of drama than this. Well, I mean, you and you know you're in for something from the very beginning because they show child Leonidas having to do a showdown with this wolf, the CGI wolf that he looks like the fucking shitty WikiHow dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the thing. Okay, so 300 is based on a comic by Frank Miller. God, Batman versus Superman is based on another Frank Miller comic. Yeah, inspired by, yeah. Yeah, so like... Yeah, Zack Snyder and Frank Miller's sensibilities gel very well. Frank Miller yeah. should have to tell his neighbors every time. He is. <laughs> I, I I drew three hundred. I, I wrote three hundred uh, and Batman versus Superman. I also wrote uh, Batman showers with his uncle. <laughs> All the great superhero books. I I made a dark Aquaman. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking idiot. Like it, yeah, Matt. That wolf looks so bad. It looks like shit. It yo. looks so fucking yeah. bad. Terrible. Okay, so like they, the the whole preamble to this movie is how how much Spartan society owns because they from like basically from birth just abuse boys and make them like whip and fight each other and yeah. do Christ knows what else so that to hone them into you know the perfect weapon. Sparta was founded by Podestus. <laughs> uh, yeah, and so like they don't. You're not. The movie isn't going to tell you. That the Spartans had just untold amounts of slaves that they could kill at any time. But every time they talk to the Persians, they're like, oh, your army is an army of slaves. You have a slave society. And it's like, you, what, what, what? look at you. <laughs> they could literally just, as a rite of passage, would walk out into slave uh dwellings and just kill people as a way to show that they were ready to become adults. 
It was, but yeah. it's funny because like they fetishize the reason it's a good society, and this is where the fascism really comes into play, is that they fetishize how great the society is. And why is it great? Because we great we have great warriors who can defend what we've built. Okay, what did you build? Uh, great warriors who can defend. It's like it's just totally circular. It's like we have this awesome military culture whose job it is to just fight to defend nothing else but this weird psychotic military culture. It's for its own sake. And like in that early scene where it's like a teenage boy facing off with a wolf as part of this like, bar- you know, brutal rite of passage that like all young men have to go through. Like Virgil, you were like, oh, think about how many fat middle-aged assholes are watching this going, yeah, that's me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty much that's pretty much how I live my life. How many guys fucking uh hanging around a seven eleven trying to buy beer, they're like fucking ankle monitor going nuts. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I'm a warrior. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you know, the scene of him fighting the wolf, it really reminds me of every fall when I go up into a fucking uh tree hutch with a thirty pack of Bud Light and an assault rifle and wait for a deer to walk by. Defendant, if you do not pay your child support, you will go to jail. Then I will blog from jail. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, we talked about like, the the scene that uh, gets sort of parodied the most in this movie, or like that is the, the sort of stand out from the film and how people remember it is like we talked like the Persian emissary comes to see King Leonidas, played by Jared Butler, and this is actually the second Jared Butler movie we've roasted mm. on the pod. Yeah. Um, so no, wait, like, isn't uh, it the third? We, we know what we like. There we was London has fallen and Olympus has fallen. We didn't. Well, we didn't, we didn't really, really do Olympus, Olympus oh. has fallen. I, oh, I, you're right. I accidentally you accidentally watched, watched, that watched that the original one. One. <laughs> classic <laughs> Felix Bungle. If, oh if this boy. was Sparta, they would have already hurled me off a cliff <laughs> for several well, infractions. That's the, thing. Like this. that's the only reason we really are angry because we all know that we would have instantly been chucked off the cliff as soon as we were born. Well, they would have. I would have been like an athlete, but then they would have just talked to me once. And been like, <laughs> Shut the fuck up. So. The the Persian emissary comes and like he gets off his horse and like unfurls a bag full of like skulls with like crowns on them to like threaten them or whatever. And, and Leonidas is like, You threaten my people with the heads of like kings that you've like and it just every one of those skulls in that chain ran a slave owning empire of boy fucking. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like how how are you not rooting for these guys? Yeah, you killed King Gla- Gary Glitterus, uh, <laughs> King, yeah. King Saville, yeah. King Glitter. Yeah. You, you killed the King of Populous. <laughs> and then they, they, yeah, they do the most famous scene where they, they, you just you came from conquering Penn. <laughs> <laughs> you killed Paternus, Paternus and Sanduscus. <laughs> we, yeah, that's how they got We Are Penn State. It's from We Are Sparta. <laughs> <We're> like, <laughs> <they're> like, <laughs> We are not. We are not nitly lions that will fall so easily. <laughs> this is Sparta. <laughs> and now, okay, this is the Boston Archdiocese. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, again, the Persian emissary coming from the Persian Empire. For those of you uh, not familiar, Persia is currently known as Iran. Yes, uh, the Persian emissary for some reason is like the most. African looking black guy that they got out of straight out of central casting. Um, a Islamic style Afro American man. Who is then kicked into a giant well by King Leonidas for again no reason. Because because Leonidas is offended by what he was saying. He's he was uh, no talking uh, uh, talking out of place, uh, looked at his wife, and he's like, no, that's, that's the death penalty. Pull your cloak up. Do not be coy or stupid, Persian. You can afford neither in Sparta. What makes this woman think she can speak among men? Because only Spartan women give birth to real men. Let us walk to cool our tongues. Now that's a bit of a problem. See, rumor has it the Athenians have already turned you down. And if those philosophers and uh, boy lovers have found that kind of nerve, then... We must be diplomatic. And of course, Spartans! Have their reputation to consider. <laughs> like this is like the mo- like because it's like it all looks like a cartoon and it's so ludicrous and over the top. But like this movie is basically about uh, race war. Oh yeah, it's, yes. Yes. it's, yes. it's, oh, it's completely God, yeah. about race war. And uh, uh, Virgil, the other comment you made when he kicked that dude in the well is like that scene alone right there has probably inspired like a dozen police shootings of like young black oh, kids, yeah. Oh, yeah. like for sure. And the other thing with that scene is like he backs this dude and then kicks him into this giant 
open hole in the middle of the city center and it's just like did you not notice that you were inching closer to this giant pit <laughs> and then it's their well and it's just they, they kick uh, all the, the all the bodies into the well and it's just like well, won't that just poison the drinking for the, that's so perfect the entire city it's, it, it, it's another element of this weird rising American consumer fascism of just self-defeating spite-based behavior of like yeah fuck you I'll kick him into the fucking drinking fountain it's just like fuck you I'll eat fucking Chick-fil-A until my heart explodes <laughs> you can't you Fuck you! I'm gonna put my face right in front of my car exhaust. I want you to write. You think golden global warming is real? I want you to write fucking. I want you to write Trump on my jug of wine right fucking now. <laughs> Persian or Greek, no man threatens a messenger. You bring the crowns and heads of conquered kings to my city steps. You insult my queen. You threaten my people with slavery and death. Chosen my words carefully, Persian. <laughs> you come to my city, you look at my wife, you won't turn down that damn boombox. Could you please stand 10 feet to the left? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, you could just imagine somebody going to one of these guys and going, dude, you're, you're, you're like running your car in your garage all day long just because you think libs get owned by carbon emissions. You're going to die. This is crazy. He's like, this is crazy. This is Steve's house. <laughs> <laughs> it's every fucking MAGA chud who took a picture of themselves lying in a dumpster because of something Nancy Pelosi said puts a deplorable and piss drinker in their fucking display <laughs> Le- name. Leonidas comes home and he's like, my wa- the queen won't even talk to me because she thinks that I'm a pedophile because of what some Persian said. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, uh, in, in, in the proud in, boy fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> In, in in this in this in this film version, which I believe Zack Snyder said is ninety percent historically based, he's, yeah. he's cribbing directly from Herodotus here. King Leonidas of Sparta commits the entire like Greek people to war with the Persian Empire just because he kicked this dude into a well for seemingly no reason. Um, so then, like he's like, okay, we're going to war, but we still need to curry favor with these like depraved priest class for some reason. Yeah. And it's weird ha- how this culture that's filled with all these, you know, pure warriors, they're not able to do everything that they need to do to defend the country because their leadership is corrupt and decadent and effeminate and, and effeminate and Jewish. And yeah, well, okay, so like incredibly they, Jewish. They, yeah, they, there's oh a secret where they have to go consult the oracle yeah. and there's this like sort of priestly class of like lepers. Yeah. With huge noses. Yeah, I mean, yeah, this, these are, these yeah, are the Jews yeah, of the movie. Yeah, and, and they even says, like, the voiceover guy says talks about how the cl- clinging to an old religion, an old testament, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he clambers up this mountain to the uh, uh, Federal Reserve Temple. <laughs> then draws, try, begs them for, you know, a good augur for the war and, like, draws out a battle plan because this movie is also about uh, proving your point with logic. Virgil, oh, yes, that is what, so. like, I, I hadn't seen this movie since it first came out. And the thing that like struck me the most rewatching it now is how much the Spartans talk about reason and logic. Yeah, <laughs> it's like the, yes. like the script of this movie sounds like every pedant on the internet. Yeah, it's either uh, it's either the repetitive dialogue because they think the audience has the attention span of a gnat, just uh, constantly repeating. Remember, go to battle, and it's honor. And if you die, there's honor. Don't die in the battle. Yeah. And then, Remember, uh, it's good to stab the other guy and not let him stab you. It was you know what it was like. It was like when we watched. You know, so if you listen to the Street Fight Show, we talked about a bodybuilder who got hit by a train and died. And we watched this video by this other bodybuilder explaining it in a dumb bodybuilder tone where he's like, if you step in front of a train, you are going to probably be killed. One thing you can do is run away from the train. That's like what this, all the Spartans were. Well, like, they, they keep like, there's so many lines in this dialogue that just sound like, that are supposed to be inspirational. They're like, we fight for freedom and the freedom of men to decide their liberty by logic and reason. <laughs> In a world governed by irrationality and feelings, we Spartans care about your feelings. We care about facts. <laughs> yeah, that's like the, the uh, Xerxes walks in on the Spartans just committing horrible acts of pedophilia. And he's like, what? What the fuck? And uh, Leonidas goes, 
triggered. Facts <laughs> facts don't care about your feelings. And the movie presumes that at this time in uh, Greece was the most intellectually and scientifically advanced society. That's I mean it's not even, it's not even untrue. Sparta in particular was one of the most backward societies. Yeah. Oh my God. It was in a the bunch world. of psychotic hillbillies with slaves. <laughs> And uh, so, like, th- there's this scene where, like, okay, so he has to confront the oracles, but, like, the oracles have already sold out to the Persians. They yeah, have- another another little uh, resonance, like, the protocols of the elders of Sparta is that right after they say <laughs> no to Leonidas, a trader just dumps a bunch of gold coins in front of him, and they're just, like, sticking their hands in greedily. And again, like, like as soon as Leonidas leaves, like, out of the shadows comes, like, again, another actor, like, where Zack Snyder was, like... Could you get me the uh, biggest, blackest-looking guy from Central Casting? Can you, can you get the guy that shows up in my nightmares every night? <laughs> <laughs> and like, like there's a scene, like Rick Ross. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. There's a scene, and he's covered in bling. He's covered in gold and shit. And there's a scene where it sort of fades to black, and it's just right on his black skin, and everything goes black, but his eyes and teeth, yeah. and it's just oh like my it's. God. It's so bad. Like I like I can't like I can't even almost believe this movie got made in some way. Like, did anyone studio execs watch this movie and were like, hmm, that's a little on the nose? Yeah. I was just hoping that we get a little levity in that because there's nothing funny in there's, this movie. It's oh, the most nothing, humorless movie. Nothing intentionally funny. Yeah. But the, the next thing that happens, I think, is the best example of a of a um a, well, actually uh, <laughs> yeah. situation where uh, so he he doesn't Leonidas does not get the the auger that he needs, and because of their uh, tradition and the Federal Reserve won't raise interest rates. <laughs> go to war and so he has to talk to the 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 senators i suppose well they wouldn't have been called that but they're you know their assembly the the elders and uh they're like well we we didn't get the auger so what are you doing with your 300 men and he says uh i uh, i'm not actually going to war i'm just going to march to this pass with my personal guard uh you cannot stop me i'm a sovereign citizen yeah there are there are fringes on the battle standard <laughs> but um, actually my favorite is right before that like Leonidas is in, uh, he's in, he's in a tight spot because, like, by Spartan law, a tight spot that isn't between two ten year olds. <laughs> oh, 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 sorry, oh, oh. <laughs> but uh, so he he consults his wife because he, like he, by Spartan law he needs the approval of like the 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 Federal Reserve yeah. and the Council to go to and war. APAC. <laughs> 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 but he but like but he needs to go but he doesn't have it. But the right thing to do. Is to go to war, obviously. Yeah, you know, always like, the yeah, right yeah. choice. And he 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 uh, and he um he seeks the counsel of his wise queen and wife, played by uh, Lena Headey. Um, and she's like, ask yourself not what a king would do, but what a free man would do. And he's like, thank you, thank you, honey. Seeing as and, I'm one of twenty free men <laughs> in, in Sparta. Yeah. <laughs> so and then there is uh sort of out of nowhere and I. I th- I've read the comic too. I don't think it is in the comics. Which no, is that's even funnier. not in the comic. Uh, there, there's a there's a, a love making scene between Leonidas and his wife, just thrown in there to be like, uh, we're just here to remind you guys. Actually, this movie is hetero. Yeah, this is yeah. straight as hell, this dude. Is, yeah, this movie is super get, straight. You're not supposed to get a boners from the chest. The chests are historically accurate. <laughs> By the way, the first half part of this scene, you just see his naked ass. Yeah, yeah. And he's just like uh, looking down on his slave, <laughs> down with his dick out. So, you know, we all know what's going to happen. He assembles like his three hundred buffest, uh, hottest <laughs> warriors, and and takes them to battle to face off against the massive hip hop style Persian <laughs> army, yeah, 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 yeah. the <laughs> mongrel polyglot army, yeah, the, the, the cosmopolitan, yes, the mixed, yeah, the just mixed ho- up, the, the Asiatic yeah. hordes, uh, yeah. But uh, another another thing that happens on the way to that that ratifies this as sort of the founding document of the current internet alt-right fascists is the scene where they meet up with the bitch-ass Acadians who are also Greeks and also want to fight and also look incredibly Persians gay and also look incredibly gay. They look like leather daddies. They're all bald though, yeah. and they're, they're all like leather bald. They look like, they're like <laughs> bears. They're like they're like clean-cut bears and. The thing, and they want to fight, but they don't have the martial tradition of Sparta. Mm-hmm. They have the citizen, soldier, Athenian thing going on. So. Uh, he's like, you, we're, there's thousands of yeah, there's thousands of us. There's only 300 of you. And he's like, what do you do? And he's like, I'm a potter. What do you do? I'm and a sculptor. I work in the it's bathhouse. Like, what do we do? And it's and it's just it's very much of the mind of like those smug internet people who are like, oh really? You've got a family. You've got a job. <laughs> you have responsibilities. Guess what I'm doing all day, every day? <laughs> posting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spartans, what is your job? Posting. Post. 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 Uh, you know what? 
You know what? You know what? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, they're 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 bred from from the day they're born. Uh, Spartan children are forced to have no interaction with any people. They are not socialized, not able to read social cues, <laughs> much like the posting warriors of today. They're so attuned to posting and so unfamiliar with the corrupted society that when they see any restaurant that offers pizza, they <laughs> they think it's part of a conspiracy. The other thing is that they also. Uh, hate women and never talk to them. Yes. Yeah. But that's because they're so manly and logical and smart that they know that like people who are attractive and have friends and are charismatic to the opposite sex, that's a sign of weakness. Yeah. Wow, that's that's a sign signaling. Of and yeah. virtue signaling. That's in group signaling. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you pay, if you do something like, you know, you pick up your friend's tab or something or you invite someone to hang out, you're virtue signaling. You're cucking. That's the self cuck. Yeah. Oh, the other thing I thought was really funny. Uh, right before he leaves, like uh, Leonidas, like bids his his son goodbye, and he's like, "Never forget the lessons that I've taught you." And it's just like, no lesson has been imparted. The lesson is wrestle your dad every day. <laughs> yeah. Remember when we were in the foam party together? <laughs> <laughs> what you haven't done? Like the only things Leonidas has told his son is like. Strength is what wins battles, but battles are what wins strength. <laughs> it's like that doesn't oh, mean anything. What, one more clip, one more clip. Right before he leaves and Leonidas says goodbye to his wife, he literally calls her Milady twice. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. It's like, yeah, there's there they don't like women, she but there is one woman with a speaking part and it's and it's the the queen. She is the trad wife. Yeah. 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 She is the one virtuous female and she's rare and you call her Milady out of respect. You, yeah, you, and then you doff your shield to them, yeah, <laughs> yeah. the lady. And then she's like, come back with your fedora or on it. Spartans, vape in honor of your queen. <laughs> so, I mean, like, there's no, there's no real plot in this fucking movie. No, they, it's go, like, to no, the, they, they go, just go to, to the, the place where the fight is going to happen. For an hour. For and an then, hour. Like, and then they, they kill a lot of people. Like, they fight a lot of people. And another, another stupid thing that's in this movie is that, like, as they're setting it up, they, like, it takes, you know, to special pride in being historically accurate, the filmmakers of this movie, and they're like, we as Spartans fight as one unit, as one impenetrable unit in the phalanx, and everyone guards the man to his left. And, like, there's some weird deformed character who, like, wants to join Matt them. Matt <laughs> pretty much, dude. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much. I've just returned from the Philippines. <laughs> the celestial rejected me. <laughs> There's some weird deformed guy who's like a, a hanger on, and like he yeah. wants to be Spartan, and then like they like they diss him. Um, so like they fight in a phalanx in this movie for all of thirty seconds. Yeah, and like they take special points to be like. Well, it does make sense, right? Like, this is actually, like, you know, like how you would fight battles where it's, like, this giant scrum of, like, stabbing and facing off. But the idea is that, like, if it breaks at all, it all breaks down, and then it's just a free-for-all. Yeah. But the thing they, is... Which they do immediately. Because immediately. that's more... That's it's more, more cinematic. Visually yeah. cinematic. I mean, like, a real authentic a, a, attempt to reenact a Greek-era-style battle would be really boring. It would just be guys pushing back and forth at each other. You wouldn't yeah. even be able to see the stabbings. But but it's also incredibly realistic to like online reactionaries because when they when they're posting, they're like, We're a unified movement. We're the new generation. We're all gonna work together and encourage each, each other. But when anything happens, they're like, Oh, God to Mussolini's a piece of shit. I'm just <laughs> gonna work alone on the Pizzagate investigation now. I have a lone wolf. Cause they can't even like they can't even be friends with each other. <laughs> and the Spartans are the same way. They talk a big game about like complex battle formations but when they get out there they're like uh, uh, uh i'm the head guy uh, uh i'm the tekken guy <laughs> no like uh, you know for all their talk they want to do flashy hip-hop style spear and sword stuff they're they're, they're like all troll owens they want to dunk yeah and and dance in the end zone over the the corpses of their enemies. And the battle scenes are so boring. They yeah, they're look bad. Like shit. Yeah. They keep like you know they keep doing like bullet time shit. And it's just dull. And it goes on forever. It goes on so forever. And the like, only thing that varies is is that they show different parts of Xerxes' army kind of going after them, like the warriors, basically the like baseball he, furies with, uh, <laughs> with yeah. wacky outfits. Like some of them have like weird sheep helmets. Yeah. And you're like, who the fuck is this asshole supposed to be? This is where we hold them. This is where we fight! This is where they die! And the shield boys! Remember this day, man. For it will be yours for all time.
No, the funniest part is so they've been building up the idea, obviously, that Xerxes is this is this backwards savage uh, tyrant who represents darkness and and mysticism. They keep saying mysticism, uh, and that the Spartans are the representatives of civilization. But at one point, they start the uh, the Persians start throwing little clay pots of gunpowder at them and like causing little explosions. And the voiceover guy goes. And when that failed, they use their magic on us. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, well, they're the ones who know what gunpowder is, you fucking rube. Yeah. <laughs> they're they're, uh, they're unfairly using fire to cook food. <laughs> uh, we we would do better if we didn't have all the food poisoning from eating raw snails and shit. <laughs> like, also, like they're criticizing them for using magic and mysticism, but it's like. Didn't you assholes just go to a mountain where a bunch of deformed guys like, <laughs> read smoke? Yeah, and like, no, no, ah, they, it's Yom Kippur. Uh, yeah, like no, the, they the, can't the, fight on Yom Kippur. No, they read they, what they read is a teenage girl. Yeah. It's like you worship the same stupid bullshit. Like they're like, yeah, the Persians they believe in a bunch of mysticism and magic, you know, like controlling fire and having wheels and stuff. <laughs> but we, you know, look, we live on a shitty, a shitty rock city where. Uh, we think God is telling us to uh, do pedophilia, and also um, the only people that can tell us what the gods want are a group of deformed guys in cloaks who we hate <laughs> and only listen to half the time. Uh, only Zeus can judge me, all yeah. right? Even if pedophilia yeah. is wrong. But that scene where the where the Asiatic mystics are throwing their magical firebombs on them. It tells you where uh, Paul Joseph Watson got his fear of fireworks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was frightening. It was harrowing. Yeah. Malmo is unacceptable right <laughs> now. The hot gates of Malmo. <laughs> so I, I would say, for me, my favorite part, if you could say there's a favorite part, at least the only, the most likable person in the film was when we meet Emperor Obama, who yeah. is this, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. this, this, uh, uh, it's, he seems to be like a, a pansexual, lithe, tall, black emperor of Persia. Who uh, you know he he uh, summons Leonidas uh, to uh, uh, learn his pronouns and, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. and says you know all you got to do is is bend the knee and uh, we'll make you uh, rich and you can keep doing whatever you want and, you, and you, you know how your crops die now because you like if you like your slaves you can keep them <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> It's like what he's offering them. He's like, you know how like all your crops die because you attack them with spears because <laughs> you're because you're watering them with cum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know how like all the men in your society are like incredibly traumatized <laughs> and you, you, every moment of your life is hell and like it snows in this movie, but all you do is wear capes and underwear. <laughs> we would help you irrigate plants and like bring you pants and stuff. <laughs> and Leonidas is just like, this is our fucking way of life. No, That's I a caliphate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's trying to impose uh, Muslimic style Sharia law on us. Come, Leonidas. Let us reason together. It would be a regrettable waste. It would be nothing short of madness for you, brave king, and your valiant troops to perish. All because of a simple misunderstanding. There is much our cultures could share. Well, haven't you noticed? We've been sharing our culture with you all morning. Yours is a fascinating. Even now you are defiant, in the face of annihilation. I will erase even the memory of Sparta from the histories. Every piece of Greek parchment shall be burned. Every Greek historian and every scribe shall have their eyes put out and their tongues cut from their mouths. Why, honoring the very name of Sparta or Leonidas will be punishable by death. The world will never know you existed at all. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, this is the other. Uh, Zack Snyder said 90% of the movie is historically accurate. <laughs> sure. and, and, and that does include that the, the Persian army, uh, they did have ogres, mummies, and uh, goat, goat men. I, I think I saw and, some Frankensteins. And, and weird uh, wolfmen. Fat S&M creatures with sword hands. Those, those were just people, those are just Germans who go to techno golf shows. <laughs> <laughs> but we wandered actually, on set. We actually, Snyder gives us a look into the. The emperor's tent when the deformed, oh this is good yeah when yeah. the deformed Matt Forney goes to betray the Spartans which also tracks because Forney is kind of a persona non grata even among a lot of the all right guys so this this is perfect and he sees like the court of Xerxes and it's a bunch of pansexual multiracial people doing like sexy rave dancing 
there's gender a guy, ambiguous. Gender yeah. ambiguity. There's all a, body there's a, types. There's all body types. Themselves. Total body acceptance. There's an armless dude, so they're totally uh, like they're not ableist. And but like the way this is shot is definitely to give you the idea that you're supposed to be disgusted. Your gods were cruel to shape you so, friend of Yaltas. The Spartans too were cruel to reject you. I am kind. Horrified by the depravity yeah. of these people engaging in pleasure in an open-minded <laughs> society. Yeah. No, the, the scene in Xerxes' tent is Tumblr. Yeah. Yo, that yeah, is Tumblr. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's also, that's Obama's limousine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, how do you not root for the Persians when you watch this movie? Because... Like I said, the Spartans are the biggest assholes in the world. Like, and also, yeah. and just humorless, like un- no charisma, and they're just no pr- character. They're like pricks to everybody, including the Ar- Arcadians who come and help them. And where there are way more of them. There's one part where they sp- to spring a trap on these immortals, which is one of which is Xerxes' personal bodyguards, mummies. who are literally yeah, yeah. mummies. They need these Arcadians to like flank them, and they come along and they fight them. And the voiceover guy's like, oh, these fucking assholes showed up and bumbled around like the amateurs they were. They were okay. But they're, they show them fighting, and it's the exact same they're fucking thing the, that the Spartans the do. exact same shit. And, like, okay, so the scene where, like, it shows what pussies the Arcadians are, the Spartans stumble onto this, like, sieged, this besieged and conquered village, and it's, like, all on fire. There's one boy who stumbles over to Leonidas, and it's like, it's over now. And it's like... What's it like the horrible abuse you <laughs> suffered from your own village that Xerxes liberated? <laughs> and so, yeah, then you see this tree that's just like filled with dead bodies. And it's supposed to be awful, but like everyone on that tree deserved it. They, they had all come. just committed horrible sex crimes. <laughs> yeah. but, that's just and, basically and like the Nuremberg trial. Yeah. Happened. But anyway, <laughs> like it's that's supposed to be a symbol of how depraved the Persians are that they, you know, constructed an elaborate uh, body trophy. But the Spartans literally do that every scene. The, yeah, there's they a lot in this bo- movie with wall bo- bodies out of walls. It's yeah. like it literally is like like Hannibal the show. Right, like where every, they build this fucking wall out of masonry and dead bodies. They're obsessed with building body walls. I'm just waiting for somebody to suggest that for the fucking border wall. Yeah, people yeah. do like, suggest uh, that, that would for save the money. Wall. Is this where Trump got the fucking idea for this wall? Is he literally says in the movie? You know, we're milking the wall 10 feet higher now. What he does. That's do true. That? It's like he's talking to the emissary. The emissary is giving him lip. And he's like, get out of here if you don't want the wall to be taller. Well, this is like this movie is like what these guys mean when they say they study classics. It's like, yeah, I study all the ancient Greek shit. Uh, 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 Spartacus on Cinemax. Uh, uh, 300. Uh, Game of Thrones. The Matrix. The Matrix. <laughs> Fight Club. Those, Look, those are all written by Plato. Okay, that's not fair. Yes, that's where they... We're introduced to many of those characters, but the ones who they find most intriguing, I'm sure they go to the Wikipedia page to find out more <laughs> yeah. uh, before uh, making that their avatar on their Twitter page. I picture Trump watching this in 2006, just nodding his head, going, oh, yeah, the, the Bible is great. This is great stuff. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is also, this movie is also the origin of one of the modern conservative movement's dumbest memes, which is. When they first show up to attack, the Persians say, lay down your arms. And they go, come and get them! Which, of course, for the not classically trained amongst you, in Greek is molan leib. Or labe or whatever the fuck. I don't know how it's it is. In the, it's in the bio of Mola every Labia. fucking moron on the internet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it usually just means like it's like to their moms. Like, okay, go ahead and take my laptop. <laughs> I'll make my phone into a Wi-Fi hotspot, bitch. You can't stop me. <laughs> yeah. We will do. We will. You will go to bed without dinner. Then I will dine on fruit roll-ups. <laughs> <laughs> when they were buying fucking big gulps and sending pictures to Michael Bloomberg. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. come, and, come and take it. Yeah. <laughs> they were doing that. They did uh, that. That's so oh awesome. God, that's amazing. so awesome. And they beat the Democrats. <laughs> those people beat the Democrats. Yeah. This that's is the society, so by the way, that the, 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 the fucking those guys were defending at 300 is the one that we're now living in, where people oh, are yeah. taking pictures of themselves at the bottom of dumpsters to own liberals online <laughs> yeah i mean that honestly should have been like inst- so at the end of this like spoiler alert uh 
all the 300 pedophiles get killed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. This is the only good part yeah. of this movie. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they get owned at rule. <laughs> yeah, but then like a year later, the Greeks win at Marathon. But instead of like being like, well, this is the legacy of the 300 that they won at Marathon a year later, it should have been this is their legacy and it's like Matt Forney blogging and like <laughs> the guy in the dumpster and like a guy screaming at a barista like a, a bright fucking Trump pants on my triple macchiato right fucking now take away my health care fuck you <laughs> <laughs> well the thing is like there's no like the movie is like you know incredibly violent and like you know gratuitously violent which obviously I don't have a problem with I love those movies. I mean like I love yeah. movies that are gratuitously violent but like it's like I said it's everything is just this CGI garbage like there's nothing really visceral or like there's no weight to like any of the action that happens it's a big budget hollywood film that looks vastly shittier than a premium cable television show it looks shittier than an xbox 360 cutscene like, like honestly no seriously like uh the show vikings on the history channel the a the action in that show and the battles are 10 million times better and more yeah. entertaining than this bullshit and that's that, another White Pride TV show that I'm proud to enjoy. It's a good show. <laughs> it's, it's a, a fucking good show, good right? Show. In fact, let's do a, a series of episodes breaking down every single season of Vikings, starting now. <laughs> <laughs> and well, yeah, another like, thing that makes thing, like I can't, we can't, I, like I can't like overstate enough rewatching this movie is just how like ugly it all is. Like Snyder, everything is a green screen. Yeah, yeah. And like he's chosen to like just have this like rust and just piss colored canvas like everything has this like almost sepia tone to it yeah that just makes it look awful just in like unreal and bad like and just un like like it makes like the special effects they're trying to do look worse it's just like an all-around highly upsetting experience not in the sense that you know you're you're triggered because you're like uh, uh, the founding fathers were black women but <laughs> in, 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 in that's how liberals talk uh when they're triggered by the paul joseph watson but uh uh in the sense that it's like this is a bunch of like shitty jagged edges and it's just it, it feels like there's a, someone shooting a migraine at you. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? I when I saw this movie originally in 2006, I saw it in IMAX at the Science Museum. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, that's a graduation ceremony in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you could learn so much. Yeah, yeah, me too. You're like now that you've uh, graduated uh, high school, this is. Uh, you get to realize the true knowledge of the world of the classics. Didn't know. Uh, didn't like a, a Beowulf came out come out around this time. Yeah, that was like a, that was yeah, like the all CGI it, Beowulf. And they even like ripped off the stupid fucking scene that became the the hallmark of this movie. I this is Sparta. He goes, I am Beowulf. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's the Western civilization that we have to protect. Okay. And that's what they died for at Thermopylae. And uh, you know, at the time that this movie came out, you know, this was 2006. I assume he was uh, Zack Snyder was inspired by the events of Haditha to make this. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you, you know, they, they, he played in interviews according to the Wikipedia page. He's pretty coy about it, saying, "Yeah, don't read too much into it." You know, obviously, what the fuck is going on <laughs> at this time when neocons are calling for a literal, literal war with Persia about our values? Well, not only that, not only that, uh, he says, like, yeah, you know, this movie isn't a political allegory. Blah blah blah, but I know for a fact when I was like looking into this just now, uh, him and the screenwriter of this movie sought to curry the favor of fucking the National Review's Victor Davis hand job and, <laughs> and let him go to like private screenings of this movie because it's like this is a movie made for him. Oh my god, yes, it's made for a guy who's like fifty and he's like, well, I I can't really come out now, like. <laughs> 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 Rededicate myself to the classics. So, I mean, the obvious yeah. interpretation of it, the dummy interpretation is, yeah, we're Sparta, we're America's warrior culture, and these are these are Muslims. And <laughs> uh, but as as our friend Slavoj Zizek observed in an essay that became part of In Defense of Lost Causes, I believe uh, that no, actually, I can't do a Zizek. You <laughs> see this. Yeah, you do it like you're you're coked up. While you're well, I mean, he is at yeah, all yeah, times. Yeah, yeah. Coked up. It, it, one must in, ingest the yeah. the cocaine. No, actually, uh, it's it's the Persian Empire, which spans the known world and wants nothing more than submission and is multi Uh That is uh, the West and America, and uh, these these 
slave owning assholes who use boys as currency. That's the Taliban. Yeah. These are the warrior culture, psychotic eugenicists. Like, who love death with like nothing more than to die. And love boys. Like, like <laughs> it's, you know what they should have done? Like, at, at the end of the movie, they should have been like, the Spartan legacy lives on not just in the West, but in our allies in Afghanistan who <laughs> live exactly like the Spartans. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. The brave Mujahideen. Yeah. Keep reaching for that rainbow. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, I, I have had someone tell me, though, that this movie is actually not fascist because <laughs> the framing device of it being told by the one soldier who Leonidas sends away to tell the council and rally for war after they all know they're going to get killed because they're like, yeah, let's all die because we were proving a point by their logic. <laughs> oh, the tolerant left is at it again. Yeah, there's literally a scene where after they all get riddled with arrows where Michael Fassbender, who, by the way, does nothing in this movie but strike male model poses that are meant to be jerked off to. I don't By the way, this any movie, other reason for them to exist. This movie is the should have been the first indication that Michael Fassbender sucks. But he was lying there with, a bolt, with like three fucking arrows in him next to Leonidas. And of course, he starts laughing because it's actually funny to yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but he was telling me, well, no, because this guy's telling the story and he's trying to rally the cause. It's an unreliable narrator and it's actually subversive. But there's the nothing to indicate that in the entire movie. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I would just say death of the author, bitch. And like, who likes this movie and who has responded to it? Who says Molan Leib? You know, it's not fucking uh, semiotics majors. Yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> Dangle unreliable narrator. So tell you what. Something that uh, occurred to me about this movie is that this is Hamilton for reactionaries <laughs> because, because it's an incredibly ahistorical sort of yes t- just minstrel show minstrel show but yes. they you know as with Hamilton they took out the problematic parts of like they took that, out the slaves the slaves yeah. and the rape of slaves yes. with this one they did the same thing and with Hamilton they added something cool from the modern age which was you know, hip hop. And from this one, they added something from the modern age, which was, you know, like fucking bullshit Hollywood choreograph, Krav Maga, slow mo, and bullet like tie. gut bucket, like guitar riffs. And, and, and they all look like fitness models. Yeah. Which no one looked like, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, as I was saying, these were Mediterranean. They didn't have they access have to the. There. They didn't have access to the like the kind of protein on demand that yeah. you need to sculpt a physique like that. Yeah, that, but like you can see you can see the parallels because they talk about the two works of art the same way. A liberal and conservative might say of their equivalent work. Like, look, I know it's not totally accurate, but it just it's a really feel good story and it like just really reminds me what we're fighting for. Yeah. That's Even though true. what the heroes of both movies were fight, both things were fighting for, you know, actual slavery, <laughs> slavery, yeah. Yeah. and in the Spartans' human case, human you know, yeah, yeah. considerably yeah. worse than they that. They call it slavery plus. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's that's I think that's that's perfect and absolutely fact. unassailable. Facts, yeah. on, facts only. Yeah, yeah. Horseshoe theory proven right again. It's like the only way it could be more perfect is if Obama in like 2006, and he would do this. He would go to a 300 premiere and just be like, oh, "I'm just interested to see it. Uh, here, it's very exciting." And all these like chuds are like, "Fuck you, Muslim!" <laughs> and the, but then like the John McCain guys would be like, "Guys, if he's going to see 300, that means he's at least open to viewpoints." <laughs> <laughs> like shaming like people. When Mike Pence saw Hamilton. Yes, yes. exactly. Like, oh, exactly. He might learn something here. Yes. <laughs> oh, oh my god. god. Hey, what it's also staggering to me is that for a movie that's beloved by people who bemoan cultural Marxism and decadence, it's. So there's so much homosociality in this film. They are just striking poses and oiling each other down. They're pl- crossing spears. Yeah, They're yeah. tapping each other on the spear. Not Leonidas. Uh. And <laughs> it's like it's honestly the scene in The Simpsons where they go take takes part to the steel mill. Yes. <laughs> yes. Hot yes. soup coming. Through. I mean the scene where Matt Forney uh, <laughs> <laughs> approaches Leonidas. Uh, it's like his friend is like don't step any closer and in the most subtext that's ever been on mo- uh, on film leonidas taps his the tip of his spear on his friend's tip <laughs> and is like stand down it's just like you they, they should have just docked <laughs> <laughs> less fucking subtext if they just docked their dicks well right it's like there. one of you guys said uh the reason why they kicked him out is because uh he was attracted to women yes <laughs> because that's how xerxes tempts him is with women 
Tumblr and girls. Like, yeah, tum- the Tumblr teens are after me. He's <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Sign oh, me up. They have all we have all the hair colors in our empire. <laughs> Dark seasons implied to be like a like bi and sort oh, of yeah, at gender least. amorphous. Yeah. But I mean his pronouns are Z. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that's, but, that's what his name means. It's yeah, Zer and yeah, Z. Yeah. But they keep talking about like some type of tyranny, but the slaves, like which Sparta has way more per capita than Xerxes does. The only tyranny I can think of Xerxes is maybe he thought the age of consent should be higher than, like, seven. <laughs> like, there's nothing bad that he does that they don't do tenfold. I yeah. mean, like, you know, like, the other sort of fascist element of this film, and not, not neo-fascism, but, like, the classical old-style fascism is the sort of uh, the exaltation of the male form and kind of body fascism in this movie and the fact that all the Spartans like look identical to each other and have the same buff physique and are continually contrasted with like the hordes who uh, look different from one another and thus can't fight yeah. with the same cohesive mm-hmm. strength. And many right. of which literally are wearing baggy pants. That is true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so like, I mean, obviously they, they don't share that with contemporary fascists. No, um, who are more like like we said the deformed guy, but um, okay. So this is like like I said, this is the second Zack Snyder movie we've seen. The other one being Batman versus Superman. We've already established the fascist subtext of that movie, but like now, sort of taking uh, a, a step back from like the the Zack Snyder canon. Like, what is the synthesis between these two films? Like, what are, what are the threads that unite them? Can you think of anything? I think that there's there's sort of a in Batman versus Superman. Batman is sort of, we already talked about this in our first review that people can go back and listen to, but there's an ethos that Superman's sort of the piece of shit because he's born with natural powers, but Batman experienced a childhood trauma that made him stronger. Yeah. And, and he has to grind it out. Like, he has to do CrossFit. Yeah, he, he has to work hard, but he lives a very Spartan existence. Yep. Yeah. He likes to live in a stone cave. His only friend... Is As an elderly gay man. Elderly gay man. <laughs> he never has sex, ever. Uh, he seems... Does not care about the concept at all. All he cares about is, like, extrajudicially killing criminals, which has no effect on any... Like, he's not making the city better in any way. No, he's, he's just, just working his shit out. He's just working his shit out. So he's sort of like the continuation of the 300. Whereas, I would say Superman, he's like the, uh, the, the guys who are like... Uh, uh, I'm a I'm a pot maker, but I own a sword. I believe in the Second <laughs> Amendment. We're, yeah, um, but the common thread here is sort of the man's self denial, and how strength, true strength, is self denial, which is why Batman can start to get the best of Superman when they fight. Because you know what, he may not be a powerful godlike being from another planet, but you know he works hard. He denies himself. By the he, way, he hates his life and he wants it more. When, he when wants the, it more. And triumph of the will as it were. Yes. Just a, just a call back though. You said when uh, when Batman finally defeats Superman in that movie, uh, when he defeats him in the men's room that they finally <laughs> yeah, clash in. Yes. That's not made up. That's they literally actually happened in that movie. Zack Snyder though, I think the theme here is Zack Snyder because he's in the way that Batman is working his issues out of the movie. In the way that the Spartans are working their issues out in the movie, it's all very meta. Because Zack Snyder making these movies himself, it's him working Zack Snyder out. Hmm. My uh, the, the sort of thread that I, I thought thinking about this uh, and like the other Zack Snyder movies, I was thinking about uh, Watchmen, and we were talking about he likes the to Watchmen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were talking the uh, like I said. Wait till the Street Fight Live episode comes out, but the, we alluded to it earlier. The fitness star who was killed by a train. <laughs> um, he was the body model for Dr. Manhattan. He was. In Watchmen. Like, that was the, the perfect Spartan physique uh, that Zack Snyder just, is, his camera is drawn to. Um, again, in Watchmen, similar to 300, he was like ludicrously faithful to the art of the comic books say to dave gibbons original art and watchmen save for one very telling detail which is the size of dr manhattan's hog because <laughs> like in in the con in the it's watchmen true. comic dr manhattan is naked all the time and he has a you know proportional average looking yeah. human penis right in Watchmen the movie, it's like a fucking like arm. Truck. He's got fucking like nine inches hung on him flaccid, yeah. just like 
whack. <laughs> just like, it's got like you know, and like and the the CGI detail on it yeah. is just exquisite. Yeah. Each vein is rendered in like you know Love in four K. Yeah, right. exactly. So. I'm a little disappointed going back on this. Like, this is my problem with Zack Snyder is he's gratuitous except in any way that would be funny or interesting. <laughs> and again, he said it's 90% historically accurate. They actually, the Spartans actually fought nude. It's true. And I'm just thinking of those Greek statues with their tiny uncircumcised penises. <laughs> and he, this would be the one thing he'd be like, no. No, they're all having. They all they're, 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 these cocks are going to be fucking huge. <laughs> uh, uh, Zach, we've we've run the numbers. It's going to cost ten million dollars to digitally enhance the dicks of everybody on stage. You fucking do it. We'll find that money. All right, I want an aerial shot. He's of- like the Howard Hughes of fucking dicks. <laughs> yeah, <in movies>. yeah. <laughs> There's this scene because I was a nerd when I was a kid of, of Spielberg um, uh, behind the scenes of Jurassic Park, and you know he went from stop motion and then the CGI breakthrough. And when they were doing the stop motion, he was frustrated. He was just like the, the dinos didn't look as fucking you know, and he couldn't do the camera work. And there's a scene where he's like. I was like, Marv, don't don't tell me I can't move the camera when 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 the dinosaur is walking. I just picture Snyder being like, Marv, don't don't tell me the dicks can't be fucking flopping around, huge, <laughs> just yeah. veiny. Don't tell me I can't have those dicks. Yeah. That is actually originally why Michael Fassbender was in this movie because he was like, we don't need CGI. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's dick is this guy's dick is huge. Yeah, uh, Mike. Yeah, for some reason, all all the screen tests and auditions were conducted in a men's room, and the actor would have to piss and Zach. Snyder would just get to the stall next to him. <laughs> Hi. Like, hey, wow, this kid has talent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing you in action. Jack says you've got a great big cock. Uh, well, I don't know. I guess so. May I see it? Really? Please. Did you know you Did you know? Oh, thank you, Eddie. No problem. Okay, guys. I did look up Victor Davis Handjobs uh, articles about 300. And in one of them, he says, he's like, look, uh, in- all ancient societies had slaves. Uh, however, the Mediter- in the, the Greek world, or like, you know, the, the, Hel- the Hellas or whatever, was the only one that had anything even close to democracy, whether it be the constitutional oligarchy of Sparta or the more representative of democracy of Athens. And he was like, well, the- both them and the Persian Empire own slaves, but he was like, the thing that separated them was that only in the Greek world was free expression and criticism of that society allowed. So, <laughs> there you go. That's why they were the good guys. Is cause because they were free to post. Yeah. Exactly. Oh my God. There were yeah. no mods. There were no mods. Xerxes is basically like the mod yep. coming to try yeah. to delete their posts. He was like, just everything, every comment under the sky is mine. <laughs> 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 you may not use that word anymore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it will result in a permaban. I don't care how many times you hear it in rap music. Another historical postscript. Uh, so Xerxes in this movie, he had a descendant, Cyrus the Great. And the Greeks had descendants. Uh, the Hellenic Empire. And this, this is in one of the great Judeo-Christian texts, the Torah, that... The Jews, the Hebrews, were in the captivity of the Hellenic, the Hellenic Empire, and they were forced to be recircumcised. Meaning that the Greeks, you know, the lovers of freedom and logic and democracy, were like, uh, "We have to cut skin from your dick and put it over the top of your dick." <laughs> Look, I don't agree with circumcision in the first place, but uh, two cuts do not make a whole one. <laughs> uh, Anyway, but then you have Xerxes, or Cyrus the Great, the descendant of Xerxes, you know, the supposed horrible Iranian beast, is portrayed as a, he is a messiah, literally, in the, in the Torah, because he frees the Jews from another foreign captivity. But uh, guess what movie Jewish neocons like? <laughs> That's what side they're picking. Uh, well, Cyrus was Xerxes' father, though, right? Let me look that, that up. I thought I, mean, he was I think just, I think Cyrus the Great founded uh, the empire, the Persian Empire. Let me see. Which, which, no, it was Cyrus the Virus. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Played by John Malkovich. <laughs> oh, Virgil is right. Virgil is right. His ancestor. But that makes the case stronger. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, before yeah. that, yeah. What the fuck? Anyway, well, uh, that was three hundred. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it, and hope I hope we- you'll join us again for. When we break down Zack Snyder's next movie, the film adaptation of The Camp of the Saints. <laughs> <laughs> I actually am, no, no joke, hoping that eventually, if this show lo- lasts long enough, we will 
be reduced to reviewing uh, the le- uh, the Guardians of Gahul. <laughs> the Owl Legends movie. of yeah. the Seeker or whatever the fuck. I, I've never seen that. I bet it's pretty fucked up, even though it's like yeah. a kid's movie. Yeah, I, I have a feeling that it's that somehow there's dicks, even though they have cloacas. You know who really likes uh, Guardians of Gahul? Mm. Armand White. Of course he did. Of course. Yeah. 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 of course. You know, according to the Wikipedia page of 300, the studio believed that uh, it, 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 was, it was so successful because it, it went viral on MySpace. <laughs> Good Lord. Oh, Good Lord. God. Fuck yeah. Woo, okay. Boys, boys field trip. Yep. Let's do it again. Hope you'll join us again next time on Chapo Trap House Theater 3000. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. 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 Love you.